Hello and welcome to my channel. In the last video, I made a dot matrix clock like this with a pi pico w to synchronize with internet time server. And displayed on a 8 unit module using Max 7219 chips. Today we are exploring another such approach for a clock that also displays weather in addition to time and date. It is made of 16 module display unit paired with this amazing ESP32C3 Super Mini microcontroller. It is a smaller and underpowered version of ESP32, but it shows more than enough performance for this project and even has the Wi-Fi thanks to this little chip antenna. Looking at the display, there are temperature and weather condition on the left and there are date and time on the right. Display is divided in two zones, working like two separate modules. So how is this made? Let's begin with the wire connection. Here is the pinout diagram for Super Mini. Max 7219 modules use SPI interface, which is right here. So I used it. Data to GPIO 6 or MUSI. CS to GPIO 7. Clock is found on the other side, GPIO 4. Power and ground are connected like this. Here's what it looks like in the real world. I made a cable with 5-pin DuPont connector on this side to the display. And on the Super Mini module, all the wires are soldered. With that, Let's move on to the program. I won't explain it line by line. Instead, I'll give you a general overlook, but probably with some details where needed. Among these links in the beginning, these two libraries that begins with MD are for Max 7219 display, which offer far more sophisticated control over the display that is not even offered by the MicroPython on Pico. Other than that, there are libraries for Wi-Fi connection, timekeeping, and weather data handling. Next, there are Wi-Fi credentials for connection, NTP server URL, and time offsets. Below that, there are open weather map related strings, which is where this program gets the weather data from. To connect to the open weather map, you need to get a personal API key and your location in latitude and longitude. The latter two could be gathered from for example, Google Map. But for the Open Weather Map API key, you have to sign up and log in in their site and get the key from here, my API key. The key is right here, and you simply have to copy it into your code. After that, there are display hardware definitions. You can specify the number of 7219 modules in use right here, which is 16 for this project. Pins used are defined next. I have put the numbers for the C3 Super Mini module, as well as for 
regular ESP32 modules. With all the information above, the display object is created in this line as under the name P. Next two lines declare the global variables. Time info is where time is stored in a special struct named TM, which is a bundle of strings such as year, date, weekday, hour, minute, and so on. Okay, now we are moving on to the voice setup, which sets up the display, starts Wi-Fi, and synchronizes the clock for the first time. The display is set up by this begin function with number of zones. In this case, I set up two zones, one for the time and date, and the other for the weather. To set up the zones, you have to specify at which module it starts and ends by these lines. In this case, Zone 0 for time and date spans from modules 0 to 9, and zone 1 for weather from 10 to 12. You should note that these numbers start with the first module connected, which happens to be the right-hand side instead of left. After that, we connect to the Wi-Fi and synchronize the internal clock of the MCU, which happens with this function, sync NTP. Once the internal clock is set, it is copied to the time info struct. And from that, the weekday and our values are saved as time yesterday and time last hour. These are used in upcoming main loop to judge whether date or hour has changed. Finally, weather is updated and displayed by this function getWeather, which will appear later. Please note that for time and date, we still haven't displayed it yet after synchronizing the clock. Because it is to happen in the void loop that follows, where its basic function is to read and update the time and date in zone 0 over and over again. But in doing so, we sync the clock once per day and update the weather every hour. Day change for clock resynchronization is detected by these lines, which leads to clock resynchronization. And our change for weather update happens in these lines, which lead to weather update. After that, the text for date and time is composed in this line which is sent to the buffer in this line with options for display. There are whole lots of options here, but basically this means for zone 0, put this text in the buffer with right side justification at 0, 0 coordinate with no animation involved either in the beginning or in the end. You can find out more about the options in the documents of MD Perula library. After that, the display is actually executed by this line, display animate. And by that, void loop is finished and we'll now look at the functions. There are two functions for this program as we've seen so far. First one is the sync NTP which sets the internal clock by reading the NTP server. It also displays the message NTP sync and let it stay displayed for at least half a second to let us know that it is happening. 
The second function is getWeather. And this one is more complicated because it connects to the OpenWeatherMap URL, decode the data in JSON package, and displays it. Again, it begins with the message output that reads updating. Then the program connects to OpenWeatherMap using the location and API key. When that was successful, the data package in JSON format is copied to a local object from which we need only the description and the temperature for our purposes. First, the weather description is extracted. This is usually in one short word such as clear or clouds. But if it is thunderstorm, it is shortened to T-storm to fit inside the display. After that, the temperature in float format is taken and gets converted to a string, which in turn is joined together with the description through these lines to form a final display text string for the weather. It is output to the display with these lines. Also, I added error handling, as you see here, which simply sets display text as error. And in my experience, connecting to OpenWeatherMap did generate errors sporadically, which is why this was needed. So that's all for my program, and let's see how it works. The NTP sync happens first, followed by the weather update, and after all that, everything is displayed. So here's some afterthoughts after two projects in Pico and in SP32. In short, you can do more with ESP32 and C++ than with PyPico and MicroPython. I like the variable font width and the display zones handling on this ESP version. And it's because ESP has a bigger community with well-matured libraries for sure. On the other hand, Probably from a newcomer's perspective, I found C++ to be more challenging to learn and get used to than with MicroPython. Although I was able to get my code working in the end, I'm still being puzzled when it comes to strings, character arrays, and pointers. Even now, I'm not 100% sure if I'm doing everything right. In the beginning, my biggest hurdle was a problem with HTTP connection, which happened about half of the time. That is why you still can find many lines in my code that are commented out. Luckily, it's mostly gone now, but I don't really know why. I can only guess that there was a problem with a new version of one of my library files. I can say the similar in terms of the hardware. Super Mini Module is fantastic for its size, Wi-Fi, and availability. There is no alternative like this in the PyPico land. However, there were hiccups and even misleading informations from the internet. For example, I still don't understand why this widespread diagram still shows different pin mapping in top and in the bottom view. Or am I missing anything? Also, it seems there are some super mini modules in the market that suffer from Wi-Fi problems due to poorly exercised manufacturing. 
All in all, I guess I have to say that ESP32 platform let me put together a more advanced project than with PyPico. But still, that came with a steep learning curve. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching and bye for now.